Hey guys, thought I'd give you a little update of what I'm up to today. Just some more shop improvement stuff. I'm gonna try to take care of some different things all weekend. I just got back from Home Depot. I had seen the shelf system at the other Home Depot location over by Abby's place. And it's a thousand pound capacity per shelf and it seemed pretty good and it's 99 bucks. I had an idea to put a shelf up in there on the wall by the bathroom for uh, material storage and I was intending on going down there buying a bunch of material to uh, build a shelf just a simple shelf and then I seen that and thought I'm gonna give that thing a try it, it'll hold a thousand pounds you know it seems pretty durable I went ahead and picked up some plywood to go on the shelves though and we got uh, two sheets of plywood that I'm gonna cut to put on four of the shelves we'll leave one of them open because those are two foot by four foot shelves so we'll be able to cut that right there um, and have four pieces. So I'm gonna show you a couple other things too. Last night I was out here kind of late in the evening and what I did was just checking out the new walkway. I love it. I got the AC installed last night. And I ran both of them last night. I actually just turned it off because I'm going to go ahead and open the doors. But I ran them both last night. You can see the other one in there to see how it felt. Uh, it's not really that hot right now, but there's a lot of humidity in the air. So that's, the, that's what kind of makes it uncomfortable, right? But everything went good. I uninstalled it last night with the help of a genie lift that I borrowed from Fernando. And I was able to roll it right in here behind the lathe and slide the unit out onto the genie lift and then take the the casing out and transplant it right over here into the wall so the guys did a good job of framing that just like it should have been for that new unit to go in and i got it mounted in there nice and heavy with a lot of screws and it got it ready to go so uh it feels good in here it's very comfortable in here right now i had set that and the uh the main ac in there on 70 degrees and they're just you know kicking on and off just maintaining 70 degrees so it feels really good in here so that's one of the updates that i was going to tell you about and that shelf is going to go right here this is where i had planned for a shelf to uh sit and this is going to be for like short pieces of material storage and then i have plans for later i'm still trying to design it in my head i want to put a 10 foot rack a uh, narrow rack on the on this wall right here. I'm probably going to use C channel or uh, you know channel iron welded to some uprights. You know maybe with a couple feet to basically have a heavy duty metal shelf sitting here out of channel iron. You know multiple ones for uh, longer pieces of material. But I want to use channel iron that way. I'm not limited on the length of material. You know if I have short pieces, I can come and drop them in there. So that's the plan for that. And the do all is going to. Uh, sit right up in here eventually I want to get it cleaned up so for now I'm going to leave it on the rollers and uh, that way I can kind of move it around with ease but that's kind of the plan with that so I'm going to go ahead and get started on this shelf and I'll show you what it looks like as it's uh, completed finally got the shelf together it's pretty simple the the toughest part is just getting it figured configured the way that you want to I had to take some of the shelves out a couple times and get them spaced I've got the the top four kind of evenly spaced and I gave myself a little more room on the bottom for uh, putting bulk storage stuff like those bins there down in there okay and the only thing you need is just a soft blow hammer just to kind of tap those down in into the angles you know the little rivets there but i mean it's shaking around because there's no weight on it right now but once we get some weight on there that thing shouldn't be moving very much i'm gonna shim it it's 
because of the concrete, you know, we're slightly out of level. So I'm going to shim these two sides here with some wood and make it make it level. But I'm going to go ahead and start getting the plywood cut for them and get those in there. So there's my little shelf project finished up. Got the plywood on there. And I'm happy with everything except for the plywood. You just can't seem to get good plywood anymore. Every time you buy plywood, man, it's a it's a struggle to get a good sheet. But anyway, that's that's what I got. I bought two sheets because I was gonna cut another one from up top, but I think what I'm gonna do is I've got it out there on the trailer. I'm gonna go ahead and take it back because I gotta get some other stuff down here at Home Depot. So I'm gonna return that and not worry about that piece of plywood. But I'm gonna go ahead and start getting some stuff stacked up out there. I got a few things like this, these bins that's gonna go down there, uh, long-term bulk storage. And then my material, my short pieces, uh, you know, short pieces of steel and bronze, whatever, you know, is gonna come set up on these shelves right here. All right, so looking forward to getting that equipped and set up for all my material. So next project for today, I'm going to go ahead and try to get my big miller moved into the new area. I just got everything unhooked there. There's the cooling lines that I just unhooked. And that's the, this is the water cooler that I've been running with this thing for a while, a Lincoln Magnum. You just turn it on whenever you use the TIG welder. And this in that cooler is what I'm wanting to eliminate by having the water tap over there in the wall in the drain. So the other thing that I want to do is repaint it. You can see right here, there's some of the original blue. Now I picked up some paint recommended recommended by Kevin Pangle. Now he says this safety blue is a pretty close match to the original Miller Blue. Now that's a sticker right there. Now that ain't quite a match, but looks like it might be pretty close. So I don't know yet. I want to. I wanted to get like a quart or even a gallon of this stuff, but I can't find it on the shelf. I'd probably have to order it. You know, I was looking for something today. So I may use this. I got a couple cans, but I did want to get this cleaned up and repainted, make it look like a Miller Miller Blue welder again. So I might show you a couple clips. I'm gonna to try to get in here with the pallet jack. I'm hoping that the pallet jack will fit underneath that rack and just pick it straight up from there. I may have to kind of pry it up and, and shimmy it up just a little bit. I still gotta disconnect the old conduit wire there off the wall. By the way, that is a stand that my dad had fabricated whenever he bought this machine. He got it brand new. And he didn't like it sitting on the floor. And typically you always see these big welding machines, even the new ones sitting right there on the floor. You got to bend over to turn all the switches on. And dad was smart and he built a little stand to get it up at comfortable level. So that's a little trick that I was hoping to see Brian Block do since he's got the same machine or any of you guys that's got a big miller or a big welder for that matter. Build you a little stand and get it up off the floor so you ain't got to bend over every time you want to turn it on. did there might be a quarter inch of clearance there all right it's rubbing on the back side a little bit so it's a little bit lower in the back but we got it right there let's go ahead and move it out some all right mess to clean up everywhere okay I need to get in there I'm gonna pull it out a little bit more pull it out a little bit more and 
get that conduit unhooked off the back of it there. So we got the conduit disconnected. I'm gonna show you how this is wired up right here, because I'm gonna take this off. There's a there's a wire, there's a pigtail over there already ready to go into this, but I'll probably reuse this elbow right here. All right, so looking into the machine. By the way, this is a single phase, single phase machine, and this is wired up 230 volt. If you look at the, the, the two jumpers there, we got right there, and then we have the two wires, the two black wires, and then we have a ground right here. So what I'm what I'm doing is I'm taking documentation on how these wires coming in and hooking up because I know they're correct. I'm gonna take a probably a couple pictures and then take this loose so I can hopefully wire it up successfully over there. There's the Miller Blue again. But you guys are going to get to see the first machine moved out onto the new slab. Except for the... I did that little window unit air conditioner last night. what I wanted it for all right so I'm gonna move it over there and stretch my long air hose out there and uh, try to get it dusted off and I'm gonna start wiping it down getting it cleaned off and may do a little bit of masking and try to do some painting today here to do the wipe down the cleanup because I'm trying to eliminate getting any kind of grease or oil out there on the new concrete until I get a chance to uh, figure out what I'm going to do on sealing it I need to wait a little while before I do that so that it'll cure so I'm going to clean it in here because I don't really care about this slab in here anymore you know it's already kind of dirty so I'd rather get this one dirty than this one Zip purple cleaner. I diluted it into a bunch of water here, and I'm going to use that to wipe it down. Just kind of spray it on and wipe it off and get all the dust off of it. All right, I got it nice and clean, and that Zip did a pretty good job. You can see the gloss on it, it's got a nice, nice clean surface on there now. I use my orange gloves whenever I'm doing my cleaning, I don't like that stuff on my skin. So we got her. We got her clean. I, I got the bottom frame clean there too. Now I was going to point a couple things out. These are add-ons. These didn't come with the machine. They're just regular garden hose holders that my dad had put on there, but they work great. So nice little uh, go fast feature there, Brian. If you want to add you a couple of those to yours and get you a stand to get it up off the ground. Cleaned off that a little bit. I'll probably cut me some cardboard to kind of stick in there as a as a shield to mass that off as I'm getting in there painting that here's a look at the, some of the guts and some more of the controls in there I think a lot of this stuff on the you know the the later model machines all this you know ended up being on the on the front of the panel where you can change all that stuff there but it is it is cool watching these guys right here whenever the high frequency is is engaged seeing the sparks happening Anyway, that's where all your hoses hook up and your leads and you can do some fine adjustments up in there 
You even got a couple receptacles there where you can plug in some stuff. I don't think I've ever used those receptacles. and get ready to start painting. This thing should dry better tonight. I think I'm going to let it just stay overnight before I mess with it. I've got to figure out how I'm going to uh, position it over here in this corner. Whether it's going to be pointing that way, this way, or maybe at an angle. I'm really not sure yet, so I'm going to play with it all three ways and see which one I like the best. And I was really hoping to get the tanks mounted over there on that wall. I'm just running into issues on how I'm going to actually mount the bracket over there, not knowing where the or the bracket not spanning the uh, stud, so I may have to make another bracket for the tank brackets to uh, bolt to over there. So anyway, I, man, it looks good, don't it? My paint job is not perfect. I don't claim to be a good painter, but you know, I can get a little bit on there. I can see a couple faded areas where, I, you know, the blush areas where I didn't really cover it that well, but I think it's going to be good enough for shop work in it. Looks like that might be a good fit for it right there. Yeah, right there would give me enough room to uh, get my leads right here. But it may work out. Like I said, I'm going to play with it. I'm going to see which, which way it work best. Uh, to turn it the other way, I had to kind of move it in there by hand. So, like I said, the paint's still a little wet now. We have success, guys. Just got it hooked up. Everything's ready to roll on there, uh, short of hooking up the, the remote control, you know, the foot pedal. But I've got it where I want it, and I think it looks good right there in that corner. It worked out perfectly positioning that it that way so that I could get in behind it and hook the wire up to the back side and get the water hoses hooked up. And then I used the floor jack or the pallet jack I mean to uh, get it back in there and you can see this leg is cleared the ramp over here on this side and even though the the slab is a little bit of a slope here it's actually sitting nice and firm right there on all four legs so I'm, I'm happy with that right there it looks good here we go we'll fire it up I figured the corner is also a little bit better for the ventilation versus having it up close to the wall, but either way it would work. I can actually feel that air blowing back at me right here. I can feel it blowing underneath the machine as well. So right here, I can feel all that air coming out from underneath it. 
So I think that's going to be a perfect spot for that welder. I think it really sets off that corner good. I still need to go ahead and hook up the foot pedal and my, my gas line right here. And I'm going to put the, the bottle, the, ga the argon bottle right here. We're just going to use the one bottle. And I'm going to make me a, a chain right here to hold that gas bottle in place. But I'm going to go ahead and get it over here and get it hooked up. And then we'll test out the water supply there. All right, now we're ready to roll. This thing is fully hooked up, man, and I'm, I'm so happier. Man, it looks good too. I really, I'm glad that I painted that thing. And I'm just, I'm kind of proud of myself for getting this kind of stuff hooked up. You know, I'm not, not really much of an electrician, but whenever I know what to do, and it's pretty simple, I can take care of it. So three wires, it was able to, uh, I was able to get it hooked up. And I did a little cleanup on routing all of the cables and wires and hoses. I've got them zip tied to the bottom of the machine even though they're kind of hanging down a little bit. But I've got them zip tied there. The uh, gas hose and also the, the coolant line going around the back. Again, I'm gonna make me a chain that's gonna go right here to hold the bottle. So I just know I'm gonna take care of that safety issue right there. I just need to get some chain. I don't have anything around here to use right now. And we got the coolant line hooked up. Everything's ready to roll. So we're, we're gonna go ahead and fire this thing up. I'm gonna show you. So we'll just go ahead and turn it on. Okay, I've got, I've got it in remote setting. So remote is for whenever you use your foot pedal. All right, you hear the high frequency start? You let off the foot pedal, it lets off there. And then I've, I've got it on start high frequency you can put it on continuous that would be what you would use for aluminum welding the high frequency just continues to, to run uh, pretty simple I mean you just have very few switches uh, we got it in straight polarity there so whenever you use stick welding you come over here put it over in standard and then you can uh, change the high frequency you can turn it off I like to run it in start. It really helps to start an electrode very easy. Although my dad said that was cheating. <laughs> but you got your uh, reverse polarity, straight polarity, AC's in the center. And then this lever here it has three selections on your amperage range that you run it in. I always keep it right in the middle right there. It works really good. You have your percentage of amperage increase there. You have a start adjustment right there. And that's about it. So as far as the coolant, let me see it. Uh, let me hit the foot pedal here. All right, you see the water coming out there? All right, that's it. So I can turn that off whenever I'm not using it. That way I don't have to worry about it you know, coming out, but everything's sealed off. I, I tighten all those fittings up really good. Got a hose clamp on the cable there and I got a zip tied so that this one stays in the drain right there. Well, that's going to be about it. I'm thinking that this is going to be the spot for the rotary welding table right here in the center. That way when I want to come in and out with stuff I can just move it off out of the way. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoy following this little shop update progress and we're going to bring you some more as all the, the new work unfolds. Uh, real quick, real quick, let's we'll step outside. You see that? We got us a temporary barbecue setup out here. Rolling some coal. Doing good on our temp. There we go not let all the heat out got some chicken quarters today that we're smoking I'm gonna go ahead and get these spring perches finished up for uh, viewer Gary. All I got left to do is in this side right here, drill and tap 
for a, a set screw and we're going to use a quarter 20 set screw right there just uh, one per so we got four of them to do so since we got four of them I'm gonna set up a stop to be able to on the first one once we get it set in there I'll be able to just pull it pull it out stick stick the next one in and go to town so I got this parallel right here that we'll use to kind of create a floor in the vise all right and we're gonna open it up some we'll just kind of get it centered there now what I'm going to use today I've got this multi-axis stop from edge technology something that they sent to me some time ago and I've been wanting to try it out to see how it works so we're going to go ahead and give this a try this is their uh, model 48-000 and it comes with a t-nut and an adjusting rod there or stop rod that you can uh, use so let's pull this out and check it out real quick I have not looked at it yet So it looks like we use a standard uh, 3 8 Allen wrench to tighten it up. The body right here seems to be made of steel. It's got some weight to it. And this is aluminum. This is aluminum here. And the rod is, is steel as well. Let me find a, a 3 8 Allen wrench. Yep, 3 8 It is, it is slotted on the bottom there as well. All right, there we go. You just kind of move it anywhere you want to. Actually, I'm going to use it on the on this back slot over here. All right, let's get it up there. A little bit closer. Tighten the bottom one, so it's got that one locked, and then we'll just just kind of position this to where it looks about centered. All right. Tighten that one there. And then what we'll do is go ahead and loosen the part in the vise here, and then bring it back. That's how I like to do it. Just reset the stop once you have it locked in. Okay, there we go. That seems to be pretty rigid and should serve a nice purpose of having a multi-axis stop to kind of move it around where you want. So we're going to use a half inch edge finder just to find the center. I'll use my digital readout up here. So this biggest diameter, we're just going to center off of that. And I don't remember what it was offhand now. Four and seven eighths, four point eight seven five, and just for you guys that uh, I'm going to do you guys a, a favor here, a hundred and twenty-four millimeter. So we're going to go one hundred twenty-four millimeter, and but I'm going to go inch. So half of that, four point eight seven five. That's going to be two point four three seven five, right? Yeah, seven sixteenths should be half of seven eighths. All right. So we'll come up here. find the middle of the part and for the guys watching because we have a lot of new guys the guys are not watching this is an edge finder the bottom kicks out so you turn it on I usually run around a thousand rpm and in the middle of your part bring it over very lightly and easily until it kicks off just like that I'm gonna do that again because I moved it a little bit too fast and this edge finder doesn't kick over very far there it goes. It just moved that way. So we're on the edge. I'm going to go ahead and zero it. So we'll do, uh, let's see, 2.437437 plus half of that, which is quarter inch, plus 0.250 is uh, 2 and 11 sixteenths, 2.687. Okay, 
All right, now we're in the middle of a part. We need to find the middle of this uh, land right here. This is what we're going to do. So we made that a half inch. Yep, half inch wide. Set screws right here. Just knocked it off. Okay, so we want a quarter inch plus another quarter, be a half inch, 500 thou. And then that will put us right where we want for our drilling and tapping. So you remember the new drill bits that I picked up from KBC that were on sale? Our screw machine link drills. I'm going to use that to put a center in there. So this is the 3 16th, first time I'm using it. I'm using my Vertex keyless chuck. Always runs nice and smooth and nice and true. I'm going to come down and just spot it. Just like that. That's all I want to do is spot it. And we're going to use a number seven. Tap size for quarter 20. Let me get some oil. Just want a drop. Just a drop of oil there. I want to try power tapping. I think I've got enough room. Yeah, I think we got plenty. So I'm going to use this spiral pointed tap, quarter 20. I'm not going to stick it all the way up in there. Put it in low gear. Plenty of room. We just didn't make it. We'll go ahead and lightly chamfer it too. Let's see if that one will get down there. You just want to take that sharp edge off of it. Yeah, we're good to go right there. Now I have to get in there and do some deburring. I'm going to have to hook up my little air grinder with a uh, little flap on there to kind of get rid of that, that burr inside and then check it and make sure that the, uh, the sleeves screw down on there. All right, so now we'll just do our little production setup. And just uh, repeat what we just did there. I'm also using this, uh, that little speedy handle from, from Edge as well. I really like that thing. It's a super handy, convenient <clears throat> handle to use. And I just, I keep it on here and the one at work and I use them all the time. Unless I really got to torque down on something, then I'll put the other, the other handle on there. finished up. We need to go fire off the air compressor and we'll do some deburring on the inside there. There's not a whole lot of burr in there. A couple of them's got a piece that's rolled over. I'm going to try this wire wheel and see if it'll knock those burrs off there. Yeah, 
I think that's going to work just fine. And we'll do that to all four, get them cleaned up. All right, I'm glad to say that we finally got Gary's stuff 100% done. Everything that I needed to machine is complete. I gave these another little polish in the lay just a minute ago with some Scotch Bright to kind of brighten them up. Uh, they've just been kind of sitting around here for a few weeks now. So they're, everything's done. I wanted to mention these guys. Remember, we did some modifications to these parts right here. And there was a bunch of guys that kind of made some wisecrack comments about just screw the parts together to do your turning. Well, you have two different pitch threads there. You, know, you don't have the same thread, so you can't screw those together. The guys were talking about just turn and uh, drill and tap a part to screw that in there and, uh, and then screw it in and turn it. But you know, I just did it the way that, that I wanted to do it, using the chuck and the collet. But yeah, you can't screw those together because that's different threads on the ends right there, guys. So anyway. Everything's done. Gary, I'll be packaging this stuff up sometime next week and uh, getting it headed back your way. And I was, uh, I was happy to get it done for you, and I hope you like them. And I hope all the viewers, I hope you enjoyed watching along, okay? So we got one more little repair job that, in the shop that we need to get to, so I'm going to get to that soon. And after that, I'll hopefully start doing some moving around here. All right, see you guys next week.